Welcome back, Charge Heads. So if you missed the first episode, go back and blooming watch it. Or here's a quick recap. So we introduced Ralph, who's going to be building the car. And I've also introduced the TVR wedgie, the TVR that will be converting to electric. Now, you last left us with us removing the body of the car, which was quite a vital moment. And uh, when I started hearing some cracking noises of the bodywork, I started getting a little bit worried. However, I'm sure you've been waiting a long time to find out what's going on. So without further ado, here we go. Stop, oh. stop, stop, stop. What was that noise? Uh, it's just the, because the chassis bows out like that as Ooh. the bodywork tries to come off it and tries to rev itself. So I'm just going to move the chassis forward as you go up. Right, okay. Okay, up you go. No noises this time. That's good. Say when. Tack it all the way up. All the way up. I feel like my finger is super glued to it now. <laughs> You've got the finger of power. power. That's what it is. And you've invented the world's first hover TVR. Wow. Oh, yeah. something that money can't buy. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I'll just pop that on lock. Yeah, please do. Yeah. Don't want that crashing down. There we go. Wow. So there's your chassis. So this is what a TVR looks like underneath. And you're right. It's not rubbish. Ah, well, I've got something right. Yeah. Yes. That looks all right. Hang on a minute. What's all this? Uh, oh, is that a previous repair? I wouldn't call it a repair. It's definitely previous. Oh, one of the uh, 18 owners, perhaps. Well, whoever it was, they couldn't weld. Oh dear. Well, is it, is it fixable? Yeah, yeah, it's all right. I mean, most of it looks pretty sound, actually. OK. I mean, they do tend to rust at that point. Right. So, right, let's uh, roll it out and see what else we can find. All right, let's go for it. I mean, to be fair, most of it looks all right. Oh, that's good news. Yeah, I mean, the metal will look, all looks fairly solid. Yeah, they usually go on the outrig. Oh, hello. Oh, we found some... Uh, yeah, look at that. Some previous. That's definitely a bit... Well, similar to the front end, is it? Oh, it's same on that side as well. Oh, OK. That's really weird. Oh, dear. Is it fixable? Yeah, yeah, it all looks... First. I mean, most of it looks pretty solid. The kick test. Yeah, that's very important. It's calibrated boot. Ca ah, perfect. Uh, Normally, it's the tyres that get kicked, but this, yeah. in this case, the chassis. Not so much. <laughs> no. Because, of course, we will be keeping all of the TVR suspension. Right. Um, that's quite an important part of it, so it will feel the same to drive. Yeah. But we're re replacing the old Jaguar diff with uh, a motor of some description. And it's got the uh, inboard discs. Yes, they're rubbish. <laughs> Fantastic. Yeah. What are, they, you... what are they off? What, what type of car? They, those were on all sorts of Jaguars from XJS, XJ6. Um, which E types. Um, Jaguar love them then. Yeah, all the way through to about 96 with the. Well, actually, they went outboard at the last of it, but. Um, yeah. They're, uh, yeah, they were on a huge number of vehicles. And the problem with the inboard brakes, of course, is that they get really hot. So if you take it around a racetrack, they get so hot and there's so little airflow through them, they actually destroy the uh, bearing seals on the edge of the diff, and all the diff oil starts coming out. Ah, that's not good. Yeah, which then hits a red-hot brake disc, which catches fire. His efforts had burnt his brakes. I mean, I think some rear-wheel drive cars, they would just connect the motor to the drive shaft and the gearbox, wouldn't they? That's the great thing about this. You could literally put a motor there and drive into that diff if you wanted to. Right. I suppose now we need to decide what motor. That is an important decision, because although you look at this and you think, well, there's loads of space. There isn't actually, because all this plastic bodywork yeah. all sits covering all of this. The transmission tunnel covers right down to that edge. And all of this has got all of these girders in it. So actually, there's not a lot of space inside it. Right. So getting the right motor is an important decision. And that will then lead on to where we can put the rest of the batteries. Right. 
So how do we work out how much space we've got? I think what we need to do now is we need to resort to computer power. Now listen to me very carefully. <sighs> Excellent. What we'll do is we'll get my mate Ed to scan it. Yep. We'll turn that into a computer model and then we can try different battery configurations in there without actually having to resort to cutting things up with an angle grinder. Yeah, I'm gonna try and uh, stay away from that until the last possible point. But yeah, no, that sounds, sounds like a good plan. And uh, do you think it's possible to get a nice balance of power, range, fun out of what we've got here? Well, I don't know, it's one hell of a tall ass there. There's, there's that lovely space here. Yeah. We can definitely use that. It's behind the front axle, we've got that, but it's a funny shape. Yeah, it kind of goes in, doesn't it? It's not straight at all. So getting something, even in this bit, you think, well, we could slot in there, but there's these bits in the way. Right, so for, for rigidity, I'm guessing, from yeah. a corning point of view. So everywhere that you want to put a battery, there's something in the way. No. But, uh, I don't know. It's gotta be done though, hasn't it? Yeah, absolutely. Well, we come this far, yeah, yeah. That's not a bad chassis. I think you've done well there. Oh, good. Well, it's good to know that that was the main thing I was after was TVR project with a decent chassis, something that we can, we can build upon. Yeah, yeah. So uh, I'm glad I got that right. Even though it's not, you know, the exterior is not quite as uh, aesthetically pleasing. Ah, oh, poor old thing. It'll she, be all right. She needs some love. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's fine. Yeah, it does, yeah. It's fine. Okay. Right. Right, I think we need to start measuring up and get that CAD model, model sorted out. I'm going to get my ruler. Oh, God. Right, all of this lot can go, all the original engine wiring. Right. We can get rid of all of this and something completely different in. and that's one of the great things about working on an old car is there are no ECUs in the car to sort out the dashboard doesn't have its own brains it doesn't have a body control module or, or a central locking system that's What's a body control module sorry all modern cars have got a computer in them that runs things like the lights the locking system the immobilizer the um, you know sunroof all that sort of stuff and you have to send the right security codes to it otherwise nothing works Right, I see. So converting a modern car to a different engine can be a bit of a problem. Yes, I've noticed that most of the EV conversions are much older cars and, you know, classic mm. cars. Yeah, much, much more straightforward. I mean, if you look at something like a current Range Rover, it's got about 43 different computers in it. I can believe that. All networked together. And you change one element of that, like the engine management system, because you're putting an electric motor in or the gearbox. Yeah. Lots of other things don't work anymore. Um, even down to things like the ABS system. Now, the beauty of your car is you don't have an ABS system. No. You barely have a braking system. So, um, no. it's going to be <laughs> well, really... Well, not at the moment, obviously. Well, no, no, no. it's very free. Yes. Um, so it's going to be really, really easy to interface this. In fact, the only thing we need to do is put some sort of dashboard display so you can see what the battery level you've got is and how fast you're going. Yeah, that sounds good. So all in all, a much easier idea. And that means we can cut all of this lot out. Excellent. It does look a bit like Spaghetti Junction. At the yeah, moment. and it's all quite crispy. I'm so crispy, I'm so crispy. Yeah, lovely. So crispy. Yeah. That's that probably why my TBR Griffith is a little temperamental, I'm guessing. Could be, mm. could be. And um, with regards to the space inside here? Well... Is there space <laughs> for some batteries in here? Um, well, there's a few cavities in the body. Um, if you uh, pardon the expression. But obviously we want to keep the weight as low as possible. Yeah. Um, it's where the fuel tanks used to go under there, next to the wheel arch. There's some possibilities. Okay. Well, there's definitely some possibilities, um, but what we need to do is really have a look at that CAD model and get into those spaces, start putting blocks in there and seeing how many we can get in. So when you say CAD, you mean cardboard-aided design, right? I mean computer-aided design. Ah. Uh, We're going to do this properly. Okay. Yeah. Enough said. Mind you, there's a lot to be said for cardboard. It's um, very malleable, isn't it? Yeah, you can actually do quite a lot of design with that. But for this, because we're modelling things in 3D space and we've got to try and see what motors fit and which batteries fit. Okay. Then we're going to use a computer to model all of that in. Awesome. Yeah. Shall I get the scissors now or? Just 
Just stand over there. Okay. Just stand so over crazy. there. It's a really good starting point there. I'm starting to see how we can get things together. I think most of the batteries are going to go over there, some there, motor over there, yep. inverter, charge controller sticking out the front a little bit there. I think uh, it's a really, it's going to be a great package and it will be the first completely silent TVR. What? No, 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 no. I can't have a silent TVR. Well, it'll be electric. Yeah, but you know, got to have some noise. Oh. Make it sound good. Well, you know. You want it to make a noise? Well, yeah. All my cars have always been loud or noisy or have a nice, you know, a burble to them or a nice wastecake chatter or even a dump valve in the 90s. Super cool. You were one of those, were you? Yeah. Okay. Wicked, wicked. Jumping is massive. Okay, well. So, yeah, can, we, can we make it make a cool noise? Okay. We can make an electric car make a noise. There's two ways of doing that. We can make a fake noise with no, speakers on the outside. No, no, no fake. There's no or, fake here. There's no, there's no, you know, big lips, but, you know, Botox. Perdió una dentadura y una camisa y adentro <laughs> Quiet. <laughs> well, right, the other way we can do it is right. the way we engineer bits and pieces on it to work. So right. there's, a, there's a few moving parts and I could engineer those so that they actually make a noise. Will it sound like a TIE fighter from Star Wars? I could maybe make that happen. Okay. Millennium Falcon-esque? Possibly. Chewy in the, you know, passenger seat? <laughs> oh, God. No? Oh. You're not making it easy, are you? <laughs> well, no, but you know, it's, it's, it's exciting. We wanna, we wanna, bring some drama to it. We want to, you know, want people to know that I'm coming down the road. All oh, right. Okay. Yeah. Well, we, we, we'll definitely put some drama in it somehow. Not just a horn that plays, you know. Okay. 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 Yeah. 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 I'll think of something. Oh, cool. I don't cool. know what, but I'll think of something. Yeah, good stuff. All right. So what next? Well, I think the next thing that's uh, really important is uh, a couple Okay. So I got the kettle on then. Yeah.